Oh, good evening. Greetings, the Lord is with you. We're ready to start our Saturday evening four o'clock service, and um, we'll. Uh, um, I, I wanted to let you know some things about tonight's service. First of all, we're being live stream, and it's failed the last two weeks in a row for some reason, so I've kind of moved it, and hopefully it'll keep its connection tonight for those who are watching online on the church's Facebook page. We're not going to have communion. We've had communion every week since uh, we first started the first Wednesday in June. But uh, last week, last, last Friday, a week ago, eight days ago, I, uh, we had a funeral here and one of the principal members of the family came, tested positive this week for COVID. And so I called my, I, I called Pam Schuster, the nurse practitioner at church, and we agreed I should call my doctor. I called my doctor. And his advice is that if I would have caught, and I'm fully masked always when I'm with people, and they were fully masked also. Uh, and he said, if I, if I was to get sick, I should, have, I should have already been showing symptoms. But because the protocol is 14 days, I'm not going to touch communion and pass it out this week. We'll be fine next Sunday. I'll be past the 14, next Saturday, we'll be past the 14 days. Um, and so we won't have communion today. We'll sing the song that was there, but we just won't take communion today as an abundance of caution. I'm also not going to teach the confirmation class, which would be a few kids in a small room. That'd be goofy to do something like that tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. But um, uh, I, I just wanted to let you know why I didn't come around to your car to get prayer requests today. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do just to be cautious. And I'm glad that person called me to let me know that they had had come down with COVID, uh, and they're doing fine. Um, we're also talking about the time of worship for our Saturday night because it's beginning to get darker by five o'clock, and I was checking the sunset tables, and the latest it is is about 4.55. So I think, although I'll want your input, I think we're gonna move the Saturday service to 3.30 to 4.30, and that way everybody can get home before dark, if that's okay with you. If, if you'd rather keep it, if you'd rather not, in, 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 we make that change the first Saturday in December. So this month we'll keep it uh, at four o'clock, but once December comes, we'll switch to 3.30, uh, so we can be done before dark. I think those are all the announcements I needed to make today. I guess there's also the Christmas poinsettia that you could order through the church, you can either look at your newsletter for November or call the church office and, and get your copy. I, that then is all the announcements I'll make and we'll, we'll begin with worship. Our worship songs are really related to the gospel lesson today, which is the parable of the, of the last judgment or the parable of the sheep and the goats and uh, how we recognize Christ in the least of these. And so uh, we begin with singing Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of our friend, silently washing their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor. They're eating color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far away. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you. These are the ones we will serve. These are the ones we will love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesus, Jesus, fill 
flush with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way she should live with you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Such an uplifting song and really a picture of how we're to live our lives as Christ to our neighbor. Our next song is a song I love to sing on, on, uh, on uh, um, a Christ the King Sunday, and that's the, the Sunday we're celebrating today and tomorrow. Christ the King Sunday, uh, when we do all six verses of the hymn, it takes us through the church year. And so I had to move verse 6 to after verse 2 to help that happen, but you'll see that on your, uh, on your paper handout that we'll sing now uh, verses uh, 1 through 6 of Crown Him with Many Crowns. Our verse 1 is Advent, verse 2 Christmas, verse 6 Tiffany, verse 3 Lord of Love, Lent, verse 4 Lord of Life, Easter, and Lord of Years, Pentecost. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drums, our music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as the matchless king through all eternity. Crown, oh, crown him the virgin son, the God incarnate born, whose arm those crimson trophies won, which now a brow adorn, fruit of the Yet of that road, the stand, the road which mercy ever flows, the babe of Bethlehem. And Epiphany, crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways. From pole to pole that wars may cease, absorbed in prayer and praise, his reign shall know. And, and round his pierced feet there flows a paradise extent, their fragrance ever sweet. Lent, round him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but then would bend their burning eyes at mysteries so bright. Easter, crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to his glories now we see, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. And finally Pentecost, crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling Ineffably supply all hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. I just love that song on Christ the King Sunday and taking us through on this final Sunday of the church year 
uh, all the seasons, and, and how often do you get to sing about the potentate of time and ineffably sublime, just wonderful language, and I'm glad to sing it with you tonight. Now, the, fi the next hymn, we would have normally waited till, till we were taking communion, but since I've decided we're, we'll uh, skip communion this week out of an abundance of caution, that uh, we'll go ahead right now and sing Beautiful Savior, and then we'll uh, close at the end of the service with our, our final song. But it's all about Jesus Christ. And this week we sing his glory on Christ the King Sunday. And so, uh, beautiful Savior, King of creation. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man. Truly I love thee, truly I serve thee, light of my soul, my joy, my crown. Fair are the meadows, fair are the woodlands, robed in flowers of blooming spring. Jesus is fair. songs to our Lord. <clears throat> our service continues with the, uh, the opening as together I invite you to with me make the sign of the cross as together we say we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together we confess the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I've said other weeks, I just wanted to remind you that uh, this liturgy is really the, uh, the daily prayer pattern in the morning and evening for Martin Luther, and so, it's what we use in the summer, and I've just continued to, to keep it going for our outdoor service uh, here uh, through this church year. Our scripture readings um, well, this is terrible. 
My scripture readings and sermon are upstairs in my office. I'm going to zip out of here, and I'm going to go pick them up. I'll be right back. Well, I found a scripture page. And we'll continue with the uh, reading of our Old Testament lesson from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among the sheep, that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd. Excuse me. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because they push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with their horns till they have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll read responsibly the psalm. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. 
Our second lesson is from Paul's first letter to the, to the Corinthians, the second to last chapter, chapter 15, beginning at verse 20. Uh, Paul is talking about the impact of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, Christ, then the Son himself will also be just subjected to him, the Father, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. And finally, our gospel reading, the parable of the final judgment, the parable of the sheep and the goats, from Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, I uh, didn't find my scriptures or sermon upstairs. They may be in the red little container. I'm going to go over and look. If not, I, I've, uh, I've worked on this sermon enough. I think I can handle it. But let me see if I can find it. Okay. 
Well, this is the way God wanted it to be. So, I entitled my sermon for Sunday, What's a Sheep to Do? And I did that in an ironic sense. Because this story is not really about what the sheep do, but about what the shepherd does. And so, I wanted to talk with you today about what the shepherd does for the sheep. And then, what the sheep do themselves are to do. Our first lesson was this marvelous text from the Old Testament from the prophet Ezekiel about what the great shepherd king God will do as he shepherds his people and maybe what we're to do uh, for those we care for to feed the hungry, to um, seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, strengthen the weak, but to destroy the fat and strong. We hear echoes of that in the gospel lesson today. We hear in this text, uh, it's, it's always important to, to be able to rightly read the word of God. I define discipleship as a, a disciple is a follower of Jesus who is maturing and multiplying. And as a disciple, one of the ways we mature is in our ability to read the word of God correctly. And I hesitate to use that word correctly, as you heard me hesitate, uh, because I could easily be misunderstood. By, but what I mean is to, to be able to hear the word speak to us through the written word that God, the living God, Christ, speaks to us in his word and Martin Luther was wonderful at helping us rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I think about verse 25, says that we are to, to uh, be able to rightly divide the word of truth. And Luther divided the word into two things. And principally all of the Bible is about two things, the law and the gospel. Now in addition to the law and gospel, there are prayers... And there are hymns of praise. Uh, there are words of wisdom. But, but all of it is, is, is summarized by either the law, what God tells you to do, or the gospel that says what God is doing. And typically the old sinful nature, our old Adam, our old sin, sinful nature is always trying to confuse us about what we have to do. And there's nowhere better that you can, you can show that than in this parable. Because when we hear the parable of the sheep and the goats, we think about everything we think we're supposed to be doing. Oh, we have to go feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, uh, visit those who are sick and in prison, right? These are the things the sheep are to do. And we then tell ourselves that these are the things we're doing so that we can become the sheep who God allows to go into heaven so that when he comes and sits on the throne, he says to them, come, blessed of my father. Um, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. But again, what is law, what we're supposed to do? And what is gospel? What God is doing, what Christ is doing. And so to rightly divide this word, let's pay attention to the, to the scripture itself and ask, what is God doing? Well, here it is at the beginning. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, he is coming. He will sit on his glorious throne. He will gather all the nations. He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will place the sheep on his right. And he will place the sheep, the goats, on his left. Then the king will speak and say to those on the right, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. This is all the activity of what Christ is doing, he places the sheep and the goats where he determines them to be. He calls, he gathers, he sits, 
he speaks. This is really a, a parable, a, a message about Jesus Christ the King. We turn it into a message about the sheep. But it's really about Jesus Christ the King. Again, the old sinful nature in us always is trying to earn God's favor. But I want to ask you something right up front. And I'll come back to it at the end. Can a goat become a sheep? No, they're born what they're born. Right? What does a sheep do? Does a sheep ever go to the bookstore or go to Amazon and does the sheep look for a book on how to be a better sheep? That, the, that the, the sheep is going to read material or go to some special study group and ask, how do I become a better sheep? No. A sheep just does what sheep do, and a sheep looks like what a sheep looks like. I, I think the way we would say it in, in our refrain would be, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. What we're going to be seeing today in this parable is we're going to be seeing a duck or what a sheep looks like. But the sheep does not become a sheep because it visits the sick or clothes the naked. That is simply what a sheep does. And goats simply don't do that. They don't go to hell because they don't do it. They just don't do it. So we'll go on with the story. So this is a, a word about what God is doing, but there's one three-letter word that is the trigger uh, the, the hook that gets the old Adam caught up in this story. The king will say to the sheep, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. Certainly the sheep are acting there. They're seeing the hungry and they're giving food. They're seeing the naked and giving clothes. They're seeing the sick and they're visiting them. And that little three-letter word is the word for. For I was hungry. And we think, oh, that means because. Come, you who are blessed, for or because you feed the hungry and clothe the naked. And then we think, oh, this is all that I've done. And we get this skewed idea about salvation, which we know is not true. Ephesians 2 Verses 8 and 9 say, we are saved by grace through faith. That it, it, it is not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created, verse 10, by God in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. We are saved by grace alone. Through faith alone, not by works, lest any man should boast, but he did create us for good works, but we are not saved by the good works. We're saved by God's grace and our trust simply in his grace alone. That's the gospel. We could quote a hundred passages, 200 passages out of the New Testament, 500 out of the whole Bible, and that would always be the same. We are saved by God's grace alone and trusting in that grace, not by any work. So the word for cannot in this case mean because. Because we know we are not saved because we clothe the hungry, or clothe the naked or feed the hungry or give drink to the thirsty. So what does the word for mean? I think it's a lot like the Lord's Prayer where we have that tricky two-letter word that confuses people all the time. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now the word as can mean like. Forgive me like I forgive others. Holy moly. I do not want to pray that prayer. Because I'm a fallen human being. And I am sometimes slow to forgive. And sometimes find it hard to forgive. A challenge to forgive. So if I pray, God forgive me as I like I forgive others, I'm in a world of hurt. But the word as can mean something else as well. The word as can mean at the same time. So then the prayer would be, forgive, me, forgive us our trespasses 
at the same time as we forgive others their trespasses. So that repentance and forgiveness becomes almost sacramental. And for Luther, confession and absolution was like a half a sacrament. It, it would be a sacrament if, if there was an earthly element attached to it. Forgive us our sins while or at the same time as we forgive our sins. So you notice how a little word can be, can be translated in two different words. Here in our text, for can be translated because, but we know that's not true, because we rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. We divide it between law and gospel, and we know we're saved not by law, but by the gospel. So then we hear this word, as, as, not a, as not a prescription that if you do this, then you'll be saved. If you feed the hungry or visit those who are sick and in prison, then I will say, come blessed of my father. No, no, no. That's not the gospel. That is the old sinful nature putting guilt back on us. But if you translate it not as because but you tra as, a, as a prescription to follow, take this, do this, and you'll be better. But as, if you read it as a description, the sheep, I asked you earlier, can a goat become a sheep? And the answer is no, sheep are born sheep. But in the gospel, and here's the really, really good news, in the gospel, we can be born again. <laughs> Isn't that the best news? We can be born again, and Jesus Christ, the creator of all, is able to take a goat and make a goat into a sheep, not because the goat feeds the hungry or visits the sick, but because he chooses to be gracious. And we believe in the power of his grace. So can a goat become a sheep? Yes, but not by visiting the sick or giving a drink to the thirsty. They become a sheep the only way any of us do. Any of us poor, wretched sinners become saints because Jesus Christ died for us to free us from sin and the power of the devil and even death itself. And so these words then become not a prescription to follow, but the word for is a description of what, what sheep look like. We know they're fluffy and have little short tails and they hop around when they're lambs and they all follow the shepherd. We know that, but here's another way of saying what a sheep looks like. A sheep shows mercy because the shepherd shows mercy to them. And sometimes when we aren't merciful, and we aren't feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and visiting the stranger and welcoming the stranger. Sometimes it just means that although we're a sheep, we have a little bit of goat in us still, which is true. We are at the same time saint and sinner. That old goat nature, won't, that old sinful Adam won't be done until we die and go to be with Jesus. But right now, we are saved by his grace and we begin to see the working out of his grace in our lives. That Jesus Christ on this Sunday, maybe this Saturday, may be proclaimed as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Good Shepherd, the King, the Savior of the Church, the Lord of Life, and the Lord of Love, who sacrificed his life for all. What's a sheep to do? Well, first and mostly and only, a sheep is to trust in the shepherd in the great good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And then what's a sheep to do? Just go do what sheep do. It won't earn you any favor with God, but he created you for good works that as he has shown you love and mercy, you will show others so that they can come to see him as well. Amen. You got probably 85% or 90% of the sermon. <laughs> I'll find out how much when I, I find it somewhere upstairs. We uh, have received our offering. 
we'll have an offertory prayer at this time. Lord, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, our testimony as well, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for the sheep. Amen. And we continue with the prayers. Um, and they're printed in the green uh, bulletin that you keep week for week and bring back with you. And the ones that I have noted from previous weeks and prayer requests that came in this week. I'll, I'll leave a moment of silence so that if you brought a prayer request, you can mention that to the Lord in the midst of our congregation praying together. Let us pray. And again, it's a responsive prayer. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. And Lord, we continue to pray. We pray for our country, especially as the COVID-19 virus is spreading and families in our church are coming down at a much more frequent amount. And I was exposed to someone last week. Um, Father, we pray that you protect our people, those who are receiving it, that, that who are catching it, that you would bring your healing power to them. We pray, Lord, that you would protect and inspire the work of those in our hospitals and doctors and nursing homes who are caring for the sick and the elderly. We pray, Lord, for your healing power for all those who have become sick. And we pray, Lord, for your gracious mercy as we expect it always will be to be with Ray and Len and Janice and Donna, Larry, Lucinda, Audrey, Steve, Betty, Lois, Cynthia, Terry, Doris, Chrissy, Elaine, Dennis, Jason, Jody, Maddie, Rich, Susan, Tilly, and Kim. We pray, Lord, with thanksgiving for the birth of a new baby to Sarah and that both mother and baby are safe. And Lord, we join Susie and Lois and all the family of Jim who passed away this week. We ask, Lord, that you would surround them with your grace and comfort. And we conclude our prayers. Create in me a clean heart. Oh, uh, let, excuse me. Let me give time for a, a silent prayer. And we conclude with our responsive prayers. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. We're omitting this week only. We'll be fine next week. I'll be past the 14-day period on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, we'll have communion next week, and we move to the back of the bulletin for our closing prayer, Martin Luther's evening prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us this day. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us this night. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now again, I know many of you come to help me uh, uh, break down after worship, but today uh, I would just prefer to do that by myself uh, and keep everyone away from me since I was exposed last week to someone. But we'll end our service with, Come Thou Almighty King, 
and, uh, and then the benediction. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, for all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou in Almighty Lord, our prayer attend. Come, then, thou people, bless and give thy word success, and let thy righteousness on us descend. Come, holy Comforter, thy sacred will. Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore. Now receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord or be a sheep. Thanks for coming tonight. Yes, I will. Hold on. Let me get my let me get my sheet out. Oh no. Thanks a lot. What's his first name? Clint. 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 Uh -huh. I remember that now. What's his last name? B I remember that now. B A R G. I remember now. Uh, and your son COVID. Okay, I'll add him to my prayer. You're welcome. It won't be long. Okay, and thank you. Much. Thank you. Inside the gathering room, you'll see a whole bunch of them. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Let me get this one. Good. No problem. I didn't want any help today anyway. No, no, no. Okay. Vance was trying to stick a
N95 on my face and couldn't get it over my head. <laughs> so she okay, said, so go out there, he's okay. Well, okay. Yeah, the, doc the doctor like thinks I'm pretty much okay yeah, too I, 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 because I've been past eight yeah, days. Yeah. But here's, here's the first thing. I'm going to do this systematically okay. so that it, it gets um, put yeah. away nicely. That's the one uh, I don't know how to do. Yeah, this. I didn't want you carrying the altar in. Well, I just, I don't, I roll it. I roll every time. Okay. Uh, so here, I just nice, oh, I, I just make it a nice little wrap. And you can undo the other side and bring it over. Yeah, and this one, it was all kind of wrapped up goofy last week because I had lots of help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it wasn't done right. Yeah. Well, it, it, it thinks. I, that's why I'm not doing it. What's his name does it all the time. <laughs> and he does it right. So you can wrap it. And then, and then just put it right here. Oh, okay. That'll be a, a good place. Right. And then, then when I get this down, you can. Yeah, I was in there putting her in the. She couldn't get the N95 on me. She said, "Go, he's been in eight days." I said, "Okay." Well, I wanted to come, and she wanted me to put it in the N95. You called wise, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. That. He's my doctor, and he yeah, called me back. I and I said, I'm sorry for Bob, you know, so I said, Bob, you call me anytime. Yeah, he because did. he doesn't, he did. he's good anyway, he called me back. But he knows it's not just me calling for me. He knows I'm calling for the other people in the church. I didn't hear that, that's a good idea to use that rack. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Say hi to Anne Marie and Abby. I like that, using that rack thing, that's a great idea. I told, I texted Nina and asked her if the snow was going to stop you. <laughs> no, it's not. Because <laughs> what I'll do is I'll just set up right inside the door. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that is a good idea. There's a heater there, too. I'll oh, yeah, absolutely. Wait, wait, wait for the rest I'll be better than any of you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what I said. There's a heater right inside the door. Yeah, we just have to be safe, and, and uh, undoubtedly I am. But believe but me, we all the people I see at the Butler three days a week. Okay, what is that here? So, yeah. well, I got this now. That needs to start being broken down, and we can put it away. Um, this this uh, goes down in, and this comes up, and then it goes in this bag. This one right here? Or no, no, right here. That's the one I thought. Okay. So you, you put it. Oh, in. darn! Got to roll this one. You put it in because you know how it goes what? in. No, you can put it. I'll hold it. It's got two sleeves, so it's that one. There you go. Okay. And then we'll get the other one. And you can break that one down. I'll break this one down. And um, then, oh yeah, I got to do my microphone, and then the microphone stand has to go. This goes in here too. Yep. On the other side, there's you know that little sleeve you'll feel. And maybe you see her, let me, let me help. I don't know how It's probably a two-person thing. No, I don't know how it goes. Let's, yeah, let's hold it down. Oh, I see what you're saying. I just felt it now. Okay, yeah. All right. And then we just close her up. This one goes, both of these things, uh, no, no, everything goes on the card. Except a couple, oh, I didn't turn that off. Oh, my. Hello, folks. Yeah, I've got to turn it off. You take care of the mic. Sand just goes inside.